Okay, part G, introduction to cloud computing and big data and data engineering. Here we come to actually a, the most detailed discussion we have of uh, Gartner reports over a broader range of topics, including um, the um, hype cycles for emerging technologies over several years, so that you can see cloud and the, the cloud comment and its trail advance. So here's the topics. I say cloud star from 2008 and today when the nucleus of the comet has disappeared and we just have the trail. Um, they are all mixed up with various transformational and disruptive changes, which they're not the only things that, they, that are involved, the whole social media, Internet of Things, these are all driving changes. We have a few, three slides or so on digital business, because that's a topic in 2015, which was, I thought, particularly interesting. Okay, hype cycles through 2015, because remember, we did 2016 and 17 um, in the last uh, uh, slide set, and we'll do uh, some of the other hype cycles for 2017 for other topics later on in more detailed discussions. All right, here we have where we first started. This was probably the first slide I ever used from Gartner. And here we have cloud computing coming up the technology trigger. This is 2008, pretty early on. Remember, it was 2006 it was introduced. So it took a couple of years to get up to here. We have various other type of green IT was pretty popular in those days. Social computing platforms, video telepresence. SSD drives, um, virtual worlds, they didn't really catch on. Um, RFID, pretty important, and so on. Tablet PC, wow, wikis, blogging. And here we have, I told you about web services. Web services actually matured, but then collapsed. Service-oriented architectures matured and didn't collapse. Shows you that things can be misleading. Web services actually did win the initial round of, a, of discussion, but they then disappeared. Actually around now, this is about the time I stopped working on web services. Okay, here is the um, benefit uh, uh, time to adoption chart. Again, nothing much in though. I don't know whether, uh, um, now we have, um, where is clouds? Clouds, two to five years. So it's not too surprising that 10 years from here it doesn't appear. It really did actually mature in two to five, actually more like five years probably. Uh, here's green IT, not so important. Blogging and social, they, a lot of these things they don't think are quite so important. I don't know, 3D printing is very important for some of their visions, because then they ask you, uh, Digital manufacturing on demand, and uh, that's pretty important. Augmented reality, remember that's now actually nearing nearing the the, uh, the slope of enlightenment in 2017. So that's not so far off the more than 10 years. Interesting. Okay, now I I skipped a year because we don't have to do every year. I went to 2010. A hype cycle, and we have cloud computing has whipped over from here to here. So it's just over the hype. So we can, so you can see, 2009 to 10 was the peak in the cloud uh, hype cycle. Um, blogging still here. Um, what do we have here? The micro private cloud computing. So that's just private cloud, which now are considered essentially at the same status as ordinary clouds. And the rest are not so relevant to this class. You can, of course, study this and the article that, that describes it at your leisure. So I skip another year, we get to 2012, and where is cloud? So clouds are coming down. They are advancing, they're going down this uh, into the trough of disillusionment, but they will, of course, go up like that. Private cloud computing following behind. Here's fine. Actually, here we see big data for product. Maybe I don't know. Probably possibly was in 2011 as well. 
um, hybrid cloud computing. Mixing your cluster in your data center with the back end public cloud. Internet of Things, not a critical uh, technology which will turn into edge computing. Autonomous vehicles, remember they're still 10 years out in 2018. As is quantum computing, yum yum. 3D bioprinting is pretty interesting. We try to do research on that in, in the department. All right. Well, I actually didn't skip a year this time, just went one year. Big data crawled up to here. Uh, cloud computing come right down here. Um, well, in memory analysis is a core implementation technology of a cloud computing, and predictive analytics is enabled by cloud computing. Um, and they, I don't see the private cloud one here. It doesn't seem to be here. We still have quantum computing sitting here, waiting for the hundred year or whatever it is time to mature. It's presumably more like thirty years. Okay. 2014, Internet of Things, at the totally hyped. Big data's gone through the hype. There's a lot of data science. We do that, of course, at IU. Then we have prescriptive analytics, uh, which gives you the prescription to, to actually solve the problem. Um, content analytics, these are all things that uh, are enabled by large scale cloud computing. Here we have the hybrid cloud here. Cloud down here, and here the in memory analytics. And related to that is the in memory database up here. So, of course, quantum computing must uh, be still sitting here, not so far from where it was, actually gone up a little. Speech recognition, that's of course what uh, le deep learning really revolutionized. And the here we have the priority matrix for this year. Cloud computing still, you know, I at this time thought cloud computing would sit there forever. I didn't realize it really would go through that graph and be dropped from this graph. Because I thought it was so important, how could they drop it? But it's logical to drop it. It's not an emerging technology these days. Big data, five to 10 years. Um, Internet of Things, five to 10 years. Machine-to-machine -machine communication, well that's of course messaging. Uh, messaging is uh, critical for all of this. High performance, highly reliable messaging. And then sort of interesting, some of these things like connected home are only high, not transformation. <coughs> Quantum computing is still just high, I still think it should be transformational. Brain-computer interface, just moderate, don't know why. Speed recognition, moderate. Okay. 2015, let's see what we have. Well, I think we've lost cloud computing, is that right? We have hybrid clouds only. The real cloud computing has ripped through to here. Yum, there it goes, gone. Um, here we have a blockchain and Bitcoin and things like that. Uh, well, this, this is of course probably Bitcoin being exchanged and going up and down and things like that. Autonomous vehicles are totally hyped. Uh, machine learning has just passed the hyping. Internet of Things is still at the top, it was that previous year. IoT platform, that's sort of what I work on, IoT cloud, uh, that's so. Uh, uh, that's critical enabling technology to allow you to manage your uh, edge computing and your Internet of Things on the edge from your back end cloud. And of course, we did 2016 earlier in the previous, uh, the previous slide decks. And here's our priority matrix. It has it's interesting cloud sourcing, citizen data science is sitting here, as is hybrid cloud computing. These are all near term. Things. And machine learning. I think they've made machine learning a little, little less clear now. I think it still didn't go as fast as they thought in this day. IoT platform here, Internet of Things, uh, autonomous vehicles, 
micro data centers, all these important things. Um, smart dust goes forever, quantum computing sitting in its usual place. I think they never move quantum computing because it really doesn't make so much progress. All right, I told you about digital business. So these are the steps the, that the digital business is um, going through. So there's this nexus of social, uh, edge computing, cloud computing, and so on. That's the network nexus of forces, which we'll discuss in the following slide. Um, and you can see what's happening. We have the introduction of the web, which has basically extended the reach of traditional methodologies, allow you to put that on your web page, and you can easily uh, have global reach for everything you do. So that's businesses interacting directly through the web with people. Um, then you um, then you get the Amazon phenomenon or the Alibaba phenomenon. You get these giant e-commerce sites. That's the e-business uh, um, step. And then we do digital marketing, where we uh, use analytics and big data to get deeper customer relationships. Find out who really likes our cereal package and and focus on that. Then we have the, the wonderful synergy of everything joining together. And then we go, you see they've added things here. So we do things, people, and businesses. So now businesses are interacting with people and things. And actually here in the autonomous world, they effectively just act with things. Because you've been replaced by your avatar, and it will do all the brokerage. And it's a broker which will do everything you want. Um, Want to do so? Things become primary customers. Um, and here we're just going from people to things, so that your Alexa will actually represent you as you negotiate with Amazon. And of course, we know 3D printing, smart machines, software-defined machines, the pervasive sensors. And then we go on to really robust artificial general intelligence. Or general artificial intelligence, not something which is the best term, which will give you your robot, which is better than you. All right. Now we have go into a little more detail. So we have this mobile, social, cloud, and the corresponding information that's uh, synthesized from them, which is the nexus of forces. These are these dominant forces. I know which is being brought together uh, to make these changes. And I've sort of gone through the in what they say here when I discussed it. It even tells you which are the key technologies. This is the 2015 hike cycle they're referencing. And <coughs> this points out there's a two-way interaction between the customers and the business, because now we can get back to the business and, and send them an email or, or what or interact with these online uh, um, help sites which actually people talk to us over the over the over the internet and or either by chat or text windows uh, stage five is really where this is where the things come in the post nexus stage um, which is sort of well which stage we're on now and it's all enabled by the internet of things and the blurring of people with things, and now physical access becomes digitized because you use 3D printing for on-demand creation of things. Um, so this really is changing the manufacturing process, um, and also you digitize. You look at your Fitbit and digitize your health in terms of the. Uh, Heartbeat and other information that your Fitbit is doing. And of course, we go from dollars and euros to bitcoins. And as they say, there are lots of hype technologies enabling this. Too many. Actually, they, for this stage six, they have the more advanced hype technologies, but uh, there are too many again to really do much. Smart robots is sort of underlies stage six, everything is robotic. And autonomous, and they say, your Alexa now has legs and runs around doing everything you used to do. 
and you just sit here uh, recording slides with uh, uh, recording how the good old days when people were important. Okay, and we have uh, self-driving cars, autonomous vehicles, moving, either you know, suddenly move robots around or people around or both. Okay, and cognitive systems interpret everything. Your email goes through a cognitive system and it says, Jeffrey, answer this email, it's important or something. All right, that's the um, end of this set of slides, and it uh, gave you a flavor of how the clouds move through the hype cycle from 2008 and its associated technologies. And then we use the opportunity to describe some other features of the hype cycle, which are describing the change of the world, the digitization, the digital transformation of the world we're living in. Thank you very much, Jeffrey Fox, signing off from this slide deck. Thank you.